Welcome, I'm Pastor Jonathan Crail, the senior pastor here at First United Methodist Church of DeKalb, and I'm so thrilled that you joined us this morning for this online worship as we gather together here in DeKalb or even around the world to worship God together on this last Sunday of August. Hard to believe, right? But as we gather, we gather together this morning to worship God through music, through prayer, through a, an inspiring message, to open up and connect with the God who loves us. So I hope you're in for a good time of worship this morning. And as we gather, we are a church that's all about loving, serving, and connecting. And we would love to connect with you. So let us know where you're worshiping from by making a comment in the Facebook comments. Who's worshiping with you? And if you're new this morning, a special welcome to you. We would love to connect with you more. And there's several ways you, we might be able to do that. One is if you just make a comment in the Facebook comments and say, I'm new, we'll reach out to you via Facebook. Or better yet, take out your cell phone and text the word welcome which, to the number on the screen, which is 815-605-6688. When you text the word welcome to that number, you'll be connected to our text messaging system. You'll receive a message with a link. Click on that link, fill out a little form, and then we'll be able to share with you all the exciting things that are coming up in the life of First UMC. So again, welcome to each and every one of you. Again, we are so, so thrilled to have you join us this morning. So as we begin, we begin, our tradition is to begin with a passing of the peace. And so I say to each and every one of you, the peace of the Lord be with you. The response is, and also with you. So go ahead and greet whoever might be worshiping with you, or if you're just online, make a note to, uh, online to those who are there. The peace of the Lord be with you as we share in the passing of the peace. And then we will turn now to our call to worship led by our liturgist for today, Marty Rouse. Thank you so much, Marty, for serving today. And I'm going to turn it over to him right now. Let's share together in our call to worship. Please join me in the call of worship. Give thanks to the Lord. We will sing God's praises. Seek the Lord and God's strength. We continually seek God's presence in our lives. Remember all the wonderful things that God has done. Praise the Lord. Please join me in, uh, in this hymn of praise. Great is thy faithfulness.
The scripture reading for today is James of the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the unimplanted word that has the power to save your souls. But he, but be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they look like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If anything, if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of Scripture. Friends, join me now in our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. When the busyness of our lives erodes the intention of our hearts. Merciful God, forgive us. When our personal agendas take precedence over reaching out to others. Merciful God, forgive us. When we keep putting off being more active doers of the word. Merciful God, forgive us. When we resist change knowing that our acting and thinking are limited by our prejudice and ignorance. Merciful God, forgive us. When we only half listen to those who cry out to be fully heard. Merciful God, forgive us. Let us take a moment of silent prayer. And now join me as we pray in unison the rest of our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, forgive us for past faults and help us in the present and future to make ourselves more available to the hurting world that surrounds us, the world that begins on our doorsteps. Equip us to be patient and compassionate listeners, proclaiming the gospel not in overbearing ways, but sensitively and lovingly. Strengthen us with the Holy Spirit to be fruitful and active witnesses to Jesus in all we do and say. Amen. Oh.
Amen. Thank you so much, Alex, for that beautiful music. We really appreciate you sharing your gifts with us again, and what a blessing. Friends, as we turn now to our message, we all want to live lives of integrity, right? Not hypocrisy. We want to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And so today we are reminded from the book of James that we are called to be doers of the word, not hearers only. So as we contemplate that, I invite you to take a moment to pray with me as we invite God to speak to us today. So let's pray together. Lord God, thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your presence, to allow your spirit to speak into our hearts and our lives. So come, fill us, surround us, inspire us to truly be ones who are active and sharing and being the people you call us to be. We pray this now in your holy name. Amen. Amen. So there's a great hymn. It says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So my question to you this morning is, how has God blessed you? Well, think about that for a moment. How has God blessed you today? And how high can you count with all the blessings if you're going to count your blessings? Well, friends, whenever I stop for a few moments to contemplate my life, I'm just overwhelmed by the, the shower of blessings that God has given to me throughout my days, months, and years. I mean, I think of all the gifts of family and friends, the, the gifts of resources, the gift of having a purpose and meaning and calling in life, the gifts, of course, of forgiveness and salvation, and so much more. We could go on and on and on. And so I thought of this hymn, Count Your Blessings, when I read these words from our scripture lesson, James 1, 17. The, the verse says this, Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Yeah, exactly. Every gift of generosity, every perfect gift comes down from God. And of course, one of the most important gifts that we have or we receive is a chance to start over, a new start. As we read in verse 18, verse 18 says, in fulfillment of God's own purpose, God gave us birth by the word of truth so that we could, would become a sort of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, we are blessed by God, given new birth, so that we are sort of the new creation preparing for God's kingdom come. God's working in our lives to recreate us into godly, fruitful followers of Jesus. And he does that not on, on our strength, but on the gift of what Jesus did for us, right? The actions of Jesus, because Jesus is the word of truth, the word made flesh who dwells among us. And I think as we think about all the good gifts that God has given to us, as we contemplate all those, that provides a great lead-in, a great starting point for the writer of James to then lead us into a conversation about being doers of the word, not hearers only. How does that work? Well, of course, as we think about and give thanks for and, and live out in gratitude all the good things that God has done for us, all the things that God has sent our way, we want to respond. And so how do we respond to all this goodness, all these showers of blessings? By doing what God calls us to do, by being what God calls us to be, right? So which, of course, what does God want us to do and be? Which is what James is talking about. God wants us to be doers of the word. Again, verse 22 says, but be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. So just do it is the idea, right? Learn about the word of God for us and then go out and do it. But that sort of begs the question, doesn't it? Because being a doer of the word is not necessarily easy, right? What is being a doer of the word? It's living out, living out our belief in Christ by doing what he actually told us to do. Have you ever heard the phrase, red letter Christian? It comes from the fact that some versions of the Bible have the direct quotes or words of Jesus printed in red ink in the New Testament. 
So red letter Christians are simply followers of Jesus who actively try to live out those words, the words spoken by Jesus, and put them into practice. Oh man, but it's so much easier said than done, right? I mean, so much of what Jesus actually said was in parables or stories. And so how are we exactly supposed to live that out, live those words out today? And he often spoke in what's called prophetic hyperbole, you know, exaggerating to to emphasize an important truth, not meant to be taken literally, but to promote an important point. So here's a good example. At one point, Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, poke it out. Well, I don't think we're supposed to take that seriously because if we did, every single one of us would be blind, right? So, so he's making, he's exaggerating the point to make the point that we need to take sin seriously. Yet there are many words that Jesus shared that are very concrete and very direct. So for example, in the Sermon on the Mount, in, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says this. He says, you've heard it said that though, to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But Jesus says, but I say to you, if you are even angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Ouch. Jesus can be very direct. And so in our lesson today from James, James is reiterating a similar point about relationships and anger. In verse 19 and 20, we read these words. You must understand this, James writes. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Well, between the words of Jesus and these words of James, friends, I'm being pretty convicted right now because we live in a culture and a time and an era of so much anger and so much frustration. I mean, this is our daily challenge for you and for me because in the midst of all this extreme political turmoil, mistrust and division, in the midst of a pandemic lingering way beyond what any of us imagined from the start, in the midst of deep disagreements, even with so many issues here, both inside the church and outside the church, friends, we are confronted constantly with so much disappointment and so much anger. Anger from others and our own anger and frustration. So for example, some of us here today, watching today, are angry that now here in Illinois we have another mask mandate. We feel like our freedom is being violated or or we're just plain tired of dealing with the discomfort and the hassle. Others of us are angry sort of for the opposite reason. We're angry at people who haven't or who won't get vaccinated or who won't wear a mask to help end the pandemic. And so we have this anger brewing on all sides. So how, friends, can we be doers of the word, you know, faithful followers of Jesus, when we have so much conflict, so much anger, so much floating around? Well, again, we go back to these words of James that we just shared. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be what? uh, Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So let's go through those real briefly, one by one. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. There's an old Irish proverb that says, God gave us two ears and only one mouth, so we ought to listen twice as much as we speak. That's probably good advice in our current climate. I mean, how might our discourse, our conversation be different if we all took time to simply listen more, to truly listen, and not not just to hear something and and think about how we're going to respond to it or immediately counter it, because it doesn't jive with what we heard on our source of news from Fox or some other media source. What if we stop to really listen to what others are saying? Be quick to listen and slow to speak. But how about this slow to speak part? When it says slow to speak, it doesn't mean that we should speak slowly. (laughs) That's not what he means. It means rather 
that we need to really take time to consider what we're saying. It means we maybe first we repeat what we heard so to make sure that we understood what the other person was saying. And then we pause a moment and contemplate and then express what we want to say. It means we should weigh the consequences of our words before we speak. We shouldn't just run off with the mouth. Any fool can tell somebody off. But mature Christians, ones who are doers of the word, they take a moment to measure the consequences of their words before they speak or before they write something, uh, a comment on Facebook or on Twitter or other social media. So quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Slow to anger. That means we don't blow up at every little provocation. A mature doer of the word keeps their anger under control. We read in Proverbs 29, 11, a fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man holds it in check. Yes. Or in Proverbs 14, 29, a patient person shows great understanding, but a quick-tempered one promotes foolishness. Yes. So doers of the word have allowed God's grace and allowed God's mercy to transform them. Doers of the word are slow to anger and remain patient with others because they understand that God has been patient with us. They understand that blowing up in anger doesn't accomplish the work of God. In fact, it does just the opposite. It pushes people away. So be a doer of the word. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And a great example of this kind of uh, person is the baseball player Kirby Puckett. Few have illustrated the process of imitating Jesus as an apprentice, a student, a disciple more than Kirby Puckett, who was a center fielder for 13 years for the Minnesota Twins baseball team. He had a career batting average of 318. He made the all-star lineup uh, 10 years in a row, and he won six golden gloves for defensive play. He was also a well-known Christian, a follower of Jesus. Now, on his very last at-bat, Dennis Martinez, the pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, once crushed the left side of Kirby's face with a pitch. Now, the pitcher, Martinez, assumed that Kirby would hate him for that. But when Kirby had recovered a bit, he called Martinez, quote, my good friend and blamed himself for not getting out of the way of the fastball. Kirby was an outstanding community leader for good causes, expressed his faith naturally in words that matched his lifestyle. And so Kirby is a great example, a great reminder to you and to me that we shouldn't just restrict our discipleship to special religious times like Sunday mornings, but rather in all of our waking hours, all of our working hours, We need to be living out the word of God, being doers of the word. So again, as doers of the word, we are to set an example of grace, even in the midst of our disappointments, our frustrations, and our anger. So friends, the next time your blood starts to boil over on something you see posted on social media, or something you see on the news, or something one of your family or friends or neighbors says, take a moment. Be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Let the peace of God instead enfold you, taming your heart and taming your tongue so that you might take a step toward really living out the word of God as a doer of the word. So let's take all that we just talked about and put it all together now. Friends, we celebrate all the blessings. We count the blessings that God gives to us. And as we respond to those blessings, we respond in love and gratitude by doing what God calls us to do and being what God calls us to be. And what does God call us to do and be? What are we to do? Again, James says, quite succinctly, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, if you want to have pure religion, here is what James says in verse 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Did you catch that? 
Our faith is both outward and social, caring for others, and inward, allowing the Spirit to, to work within us, keeping us pure and holy before God. It's vertical in relationship with God and horizontal in relationship with others. Be doers of the word. So yes, as red-letter Christians, let's follow Jesus in our words and actions. And may God, by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, grant us the courage, the power, and the desire to truly accomplish God's purposes, God's word. So again, as the Nike phrase puts it, just do it. Be doers of the word. Amen and amen. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. There, the, there's a hymn that says that, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. That's the gist of what we're saying today. We want to be doers of the word. And, and again, we don't do this on our own strength. We do it as we connect to the God who loves us. So we're going to take some time now to pray, to pray for each other, to give thanks for the blessings to count some of those blessings we talked about, and then to lay down the burdens and concerns and needs that we have. So I invite you to list in the Facebook comments what's a joy or blessing for you today, or what's a need or prayer request that you might have. Please list those so we can be praying for those throughout the week. But as we go forward, a few things that I know about. Uh, first of all, we're thankful for this weekend of Corn Fest for the joys and blessings that's been for the community. We thank you for an exciting game between DeKalb High School and Serena, uh, Serena Sycamore High School uh, yeah, this weekend, and what a game that was. Um, I was cheering for DeKalb because I live here in DeKalb, so yay, DeKalb won. In any case, uh, we're thankful for those things. We're thankful for answers to prayer. We've been praying for Barb Grilke's son-in-law, John Stroud, and he came through surgery this week successfully. We want to continue to pray as the doctors uh, treat him. We also, of course, think about what's going on around us in the world, and we so our hearts are breaking for the families that lost uh, members of the of loved ones in the bombings in Afghanistan, both the Afghani people and our own troops that, that died there, and so we want to be in prayer for each of, the, of those families. We want to be praying for our brothers and sisters along the Gulf Coast, as now Hurricane Ida is threatening potentially a Category 4, and so we pray for all those in the path, that they would get out of the way and take precautions to be as safe as possible in the midst of that. So we have much to be thankful for, much to pray for. So I'm going to give you a moment to lift up your prayers. And you can do that out loud there at home, or you can pray silently, whatever you want to do. I'm going to pause here for a moment, let you pray, connect with the God who loves you, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let's go now before the Lord together in prayer. Gracious God, we do count our blessings this morning. And we, again, if we took time to truly name them one by one, we would be here literally all day. But we thank you so much for the way that you work in our lives, for the way that you heal us and surround us with so many good things. And so we, we give you praise and honor today. We also praise you and honor you because you're willing to hear our complaints and hear our cries and hear our needs. And so we lay before you the struggles of our hearts that have been lifted up verbally and silently before you this morning. Lord, answer our prayers. Bring the wholeness, bring the healing, bring the relief that we need from you. And so we pray again for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. We pray for those along the Gulf Coast. We pray for, again, this worldwide pandemic that still uh, needs so many more doses of a vaccine to truly uh, get past it. And so we pray that you would help our governments and leaders to, to make that happen sooner rather than later. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, those who are in the hospital, those who are recovering from illness, those who are homebound, for our neighbors who live around us. Again, we pray that you would help us to love our neighbors by getting to know them uh, as we continue that process. But we commit to you the rest of this day, the rest of this week, the rest of this year, May you use us to be your hands and feet of love and grace and peace. And now, Lord, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we together say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. So friends, this week I was uh, doing some things to try to connect out in the community. And I met somebody as we were doing quick connections through the Chamber of Commerce. I met a business person and I explained where I was pastoring here at First UMC. And, and she was telling me about her business. And she said, wait, First UMC, that's like VBS at Wall Camp, right? I said, absolutely. And she said, yes, yes, I love Wall Camp. She said, I grew up going to Wall Camp and, and I've been sending my kids there through your VBS program. So what a small world, but, but what a big impact. And so I'm thankful for, again, the gifts and the graces and the time and the talents that you offer to make things like Vacation Bible School happen during the summer, for all the other ministries and programs that connect with people and affect their lives and help them grow. And so thank you so much for your generosity, for the gifts you give. And we would ask you to continue to do so as we move forward so that we might do even more than we've already done to be a blessing to DeKalb and to the world around us. So if you would like to give to First UMC Ministries, you can mail a check here to 317 North 4th Street here in DeKalb, or you can go to our church website at firstumc.net, scroll down to the red e-giving button, click on that, and there's all different funds you can give to. But thank you again for your generosity, for your faithful support, and may God continue to bless us as we faithfully follow God together. Amen. So we are thankful for all these good gifts. Uh, we turn now to our closing hymn, Bless Be the Tie That Binds. Friends, hear this benediction as we think about our message for today. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Instead, be doers of the word. Go out and just do it as God enables you and empowers you. Thank you for being a blessing to those around you and being a doer of the word. Go in God's grace and God's peace. Amen. So welcome. We are privilege to celebrate some recent graduates from DeKalb High School and to give them a gift as they go on to their, the next thing in their lives. And so we're excited to 
present some work that the Sew and Awe group from our church created to, to give to our young ladies here, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about what they're doing post high school. So we're going to start first here with whoever you are. Tell us who you are and where you're going and what you're going to be doing. Um, I'm Natalie. I'm going to University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and I'm going to be majoring in physics and minoring in Spanish. And minoring in Spanish. Okay, and you are? I'm Annie Terrell. I'm going to Kish, and I'm undecided on my major, and I'm dancing at NIU. And you're dancing, where, who are you dancing with? What group? The NIU Silverettes. The Silverettes, which yes. are kind of the famous NIU group. All right, excellent. So, so thank you, uh, I mean, for sharing what you're going to be doing. Um, just don't space out too much as you're studying <laughs> astrophysics. I got to get my jokes in, of course. Um, but we're um, excited to present to you some gifts, and I've asked Marsha Goodrich to come and present first Natalie with your gift. And what they're receiving is called a quillo. It's a pillow and a quilt. And so it, it starts out as a pillow, and then you unfold it, and as you pull it open, then it unfolds, and look at that, it's like stars. Yeah, beautiful. And so we're going to ask Marcia to wrap that around Natalie once she's got it all opened up. We understood that her colors were yellow and dark blue and astro. So yellow and dark yeah. blue, <laughs> and of course, a space theme with all the. Space yes, it's beautiful. So it's opened up, opened up and yellow, yellow on the inside. Stars. Okay, and so go ahead and wrap that around her. On a 99 degree day. All right. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's hot out. But but see, when you're off on your own and you're chilly, you can wrap yourself up. And the idea here uh, is that you are being wrapped up with the love of God and wrapped up with the love of this church and congregation who go with you in the form of this quilt. So every time you wrap yourself up, you can say, wow, I'm being hugged by all the people of First United Methodist Church. All right, so, let's, so, so congratulations on that. And then let's get the one for Annie here behind you. And these are also, I understand, colors that Annie likes. Yes, yes. <laughs> glittery. It's glittery. Oh, wow. I love glittery. it. <laughs> so that's what it is when you fold it up to make a pillow on it. So as you can see, it's, it, if it's a challenge to take apart, I can't imagine what it's like to put yeah, back together, right? <laughs> so we're not going to show this on film for those of you watching, um, but yes. All right, so I totally unfold it. You got your lavender and you got your colors. I love it. This is sort of like origami with quill, with a <laughs> fabric, I think, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So wrap that around her. Thank you. Okay, and so Marsha, I'm going to have you step back here. over here, and then I'm going to offer a prayer for the two of you. So I'm just going to put my hands on your shoulders, and so let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for Natalie and for Annie for all the things that they've accomplished already in their, in their lives through their school years and high school years, for the gifts and abilities and talents that you've given to each one of them. As we send them forth, whether uh, they're leaving town or staying nearby. As we send them forth, though, to their next big thing, to their further studies and dance and other activities, we pray that you would go with them, that they would know that they are never alone, that they are always surrounded by your love and grace, and that they are remembered and prayed for and, and thought of by the members of this congregation of First United Methodist Church. As, the, as they are wrapped up by these quilts, may they always remember how surrounded and loved they are by us and by you. So bless them, keep them, watch over them, we pray now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. So amen. So again, congratulations to both of you. We wish you God's best. And keep in touch with us. Don't be strangers when you're around. Come and join us. Or, you know, there's, there's always opportunities for, for serving. And there's always vacation Bible school and other activities you guys can help with. But thank you for all the things that you've done. And congratulations. Thank you. All right. So that's a wrap and blessings to all you at home as well. And now we want to give you a few ideas before we depart on the ways that you can put your faith in action this week, some announcements that will help you. First of all, one of the ways you can help children around our community and family members and friends is to bring them to Sunday school as we start Sunday school for the fall season on September 12th, the second Sunday of September at 9 a.m. here at the church. We've got a great program scheduled for each age level, and so come and join us for Sunday school starting September 12th. 
And then another way you can put your faith in action is to help us build our team of leadership here at the church. There are a couple positions that we need help with. We have help wanted that are paid part-time positions. The first is bookkeeper, helping us process our, our bills and, and do our, doing our paychecks. So if you know, know somebody that has some gifts around bookkeeping, please put them in touch with us. We'd love to talk with them. The other help needed is for this very service, for all the video editing that we're doing as, our, as we do our online worship. We need somebody who would like to work several hours a week doing video editing to help us prepare these services. So again, if you know somebody who might be a good candidate, please put them in touch with us, and that would be very helpful. Thank you. Finally, a couple items just as follow-up from the last few weeks. We had talked about the art of neighboring, reaching out and getting to know your immediate neighbors surrounding you. Do you know the people who live across the street or behind you or next door to you? We're encouraging you to get to know them, build relationships so that you can truly love your neighbor as you love yourself. And we have available a COVID-19 neighboring toolkit, which gives great ideas for how you can begin to build those relationships and move them to the next level. So if you haven't already picked one up, they're available here at the church or they're also available through our website. So get a copy of the Art of Neighboring, Neighboring Toolkit. And then lastly, we did a Blessing of the Backpacks on, on the 15th of August, and there are little tags that say this is a blessed backpack. Well, not everybody was able to be here on that Sunday, but if you would still like to get one of those tags, Nancy Melms, our Christian Ed Director, has created some more of those. So again, stop by the church and pick one up for your grandchildren or your children or for yourself. And uh, again, know that God's blessing goes with each and every one of you. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. If you'd, We invite you to join us again next Sunday uh, as, as we worship together. Again, we are in person at full capacity wearing masks. We are also will continue our online worship at 9 a.m. next Sunday, September 5th. We'll gather together as we continue this series on being doers of the word. And we will look at James chapter 2 together and talk about the distracting distinctions we make that hinder our ability to work together for God's kingdom. So join us next Sunday. Until then, may God bless and keep you. Have a great week.